We want to continue the thought of our uh, study we started last week, The Great Deceiver. You know, the devil doesn't want you to know anything about him. He just wants you to follow him. But you remember this, the devil is an enemy of the world. He's definitely an enemy of God and he is an enemy of the Christian faith. And if we don't acknowledge what he is and, and what he does, we will not have victory over him. You say, preacher, it, it, the devil's not as bad as you say. No, he's worse. Well... I, I don't even really believe there is a devil. I've met people that don't believe there's a devil and he's revealed himself to him and, and it's amazing how they believe. He is real and don't think any different, please. In the book of Revelation, chapter 12, this was one of our kickoff verses last week in verse 9. And the dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and Satan which deceiveth the whole world. Now remember, our title is The Great Deceiver, who deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Now, Lord, open up our hearts to your word. I know Satan and his forces don't want us to hear what we have to say today, but, Lord, you have revealed him. We know his ways. They haven't changed, and we can have victory in our life knowing our enemy. Again, we pray the lost will be saved, the saved will be encouraged, and Lord, that you will fight the devil in this hour. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Last week as we began, we saw uh, the importance of knowing the enemy, the knowing the enemy and how we as Americans, our government always watches the enemy and they know the enemy, they know how they think, they know how they work, so we can have an upper hand on them. Well, we need the same thing with the, with the devil. If we know what he doesn't like, those are the things that we should be doing. If we know what he does like, those are the things we should have nothing to do with. Amen? So last week we began this study of the devil hates the church. Now we've already come to the understanding that we are the church. This building, uh, some people got up today and, and say, well, I'm going to go to church. And we think about this building being the church. It is not. It is the church building. It's the building that houses the church. But folks, I'm not going to argue with you about this. I call it the church too. So uh, I know what you're talking about. But you know God hates the assembling together for worship of God. The devil hates that. The devil hates that. God loves it. The devil hates it. And we talked about the reason last week why God, uh, God loves it and the devil hates it is because the Word of God is preached. Where we have the Word of God given, we have liberty. Where we have the Word of God given, we have the knowledge of righteousness and holiness for the saved and for salvation for the lost. You know, as I said in Sunday school, many people have many thoughts in going to heaven. Many say, well, let's just be good. We'll go to heaven. There is none righteous in us. There is no good in us. That's why Jesus Christ came to die on the cross for us. Some people say, well, my church affiliation will get you into heaven. Church affiliation will not get you into heaven, never has, and never will get you into heaven. We try to buy our way into heaven. We try, to, we try to maneuver our way into heaven. We try to talk our way into heaven. And all of these things fall short. The Bible says that, that all of our sin and all these things fall short of the glory of heaven. The only thing that brings us into heaven is the knowledge that we get from God's Word in the book of Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. The Word of God will not lie to us. It will tell us what we need to do to be saved. It tells us that we're all sinners and have a need of a Savior. It tells us that we're all without hope and have need of a Savior. It tells us that the only way to heaven is through one door and one door only. And Jesus said that He is that door. And you cannot get into heaven by any other means save Jesus Christ. 
We know that. The Word of God teaches us. Not only does He save us, but He keeps us. The devil doesn't want you to understand that once you're saved, you're kept. I, uh, I, I, I'm sorry. It's Brother Jerry's and Carolyn's anniversary. Let's use them as an example. <laughs> we'll use them as an example. Pop's here and, and uh, the kids are... There, there was only three of you? Four of you? Okay. Well, three of you are here. You were born into Dad's family. And we see that you three were the real good ones. And the one that's not here was probably the bad one. <laughs> At least that's the story we're going to use right now. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, in doing so, I know as they grew up, that they didn't always do what the parents told them to do. They've got in trouble. They sinned against their parents. But even though they sinned against their parents, it didn't cease them from being their parents' children. Amen. Same thing with the Lord Jesus Christ. Once you're born into the family of the living God, you can't get unborn. No way, no how. And I tell you this this morning, that doesn't give us a license to go out and sin. There's, there's punishment when we sin, as there's punishment when we sin against our parents. And so we talked about the Word of God. Today now, I want to talk about the Holy Spirit. The devil doesn't want the Holy Spirit near us. The devil doesn't want the Holy Spirit to convict us because when the Holy Spirit tries to start wooing us to Christ Jesus, he loses. Now, I'm not going to talk about the Holy Spirit of religion where they go just absolutely out of their mind. They, they say things they don't even know what they're talking about. They'll jump pews. They'll, the, the Bible says let everything be done decently in order in the book of 1 Corinthians. And it's not pew jumping, screaming out movement of the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit is very much at work today. In Acts chapter 2, the Bible tells us, and the Holy Spirit was poured out upon this earth. Before that time, the Holy Spirit would come down and indwell in individuals. But now, you and I, we walk through the presence of the Holy Spirit whether you know it or not. The Holy Spirit is not an it. I remember the big campaign when we were younger. It was, I found it. Well, what did you find? I found the Holy Spirit. No, He is not an it. He is a He. Yeah. He is God, the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit's very important. If you're saved or lost, the Holy Spirit's important. In the book of Thessalonians, it tells us that the Holy Spirit suppresses the Antichrist forces. You say, well, it's not suppressing very good. Oh, it's going to get worse. You take the Holy Spirit out with the Christians during the time of resurrection or the rapture. And I'm telling you what, you're going to see the Antichrist forces unabated and you're going to see how bad this world's going to get. It's a horrible thing. But the Holy Spirit, and you get around the Word of God, and we're going to talk about this in a minute. You get around the Word of God, the Holy Spirit in your heart, He makes the Word of God scream out at you, you need to be saved today. And when it does, it won't be a deal where you can hear audibly with your ear, but you're going to know it in your heart. You're going to have that uneasy feeling that I've got to do something with my life. I want to tell you what you need to do with your life. You need to give it to Jesus. You need to give it to God, and He'll take care of it. Well, the Bible tells us this in the book of John, chapter 14. Would you join me just for a moment in the book of John, chapter 14? Today, maybe the Holy Spirit is working with your heart unto salvation. Today, I encourage you, don't push the Holy Spirit away, but take that wooing power, that that, uh, that knowledge that you need to be saved and accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. Over in the book of uh, uh, John chapter 14, and I want to look in verse 26 of John chapter 14. Jesus is trying to prepare the church for Him to go away. 
And he says, I cannot go away I, until the Holy, till you know that the Holy Spirit's coming to you. And he says, it's expedient for me to go away. But in John chapter 14, verse 26, the Bible says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Now the importance of the Holy Spirit to come down. The Bible says he will be a comforter. Before that time, Jesus Christ is the comforter of the people. He brought great comfort to them. Now when Jesus Christ leaves, we need another comforter. And this comforter is called He the Holy Spirit. And He says the Father will give Him to you. Well, He did in the book of Acts chapter 2. Now that's what happened in Acts chapter 2. God gave us the Holy Spirit on this earth to surround and, and to engulf the earth. That is not when the church was started. The church was already started. Man, they even had a treasurer already. Amen? They were already going out two by two witnessing and, and bringing people to Christ Jesus, testifying of the gospel of Jesus Christ. What Acts chapter 2 did, it brought us the Holy Spirit and then a message was preached by Peter and the convicting power of the Holy Spirit caused people to look at their life and they said, I'm in need of a Savior. And that day, some 3,000 people accepted Christ as Savior and then they followed their Lord in scriptural baptism. Tell me the Holy Spirit can't change lives. He can and He can change your life too. The Bible again talks about uh, the convicting power of the Holy Spirit. He says He shall teach you and bring all things back to your mind. What's He going to teach you? Well, He teaches you you need to be saved. He teaches you after you're saved that you need to start growing in the Lord and, and, and winning others to Jesus Christ. In John chapter 16, verse 7, He says, Nevertheless, this is Jesus speaking, uh, and He says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter... Now, who's the Comforter? The Holy Spirit will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send Him unto you. And so the, the devil doesn't want you to know anything about the power of the Holy Spirit. Because in the Holy Spirit we have much wisdom. The wisdom unto salvation. And then the growing wisdom to be great Christians for the Lord. You say, how does that happen? I don't know, but I know it happens. I know that I'm a lot more in depth in the things of God than I was the day I got saved. It happens by opening up the Word of God and, and letting God feed you and, and, and let the Holy Spirit teach you what you need to know. He implants that into your life and it's important. And so the conviction power of the Holy Spirit is so important. Have you ever been, for those of you who are saved, do you remember the day that, that maybe you'd been in church and the preacher was preaching about salvation and you were so fidgety and you were so, so uh, uh, uncomfortable and you'd think, preacher, would you quit talking about this stuff? Go on to something else. Say, what made you feel uncomfortable? That was he, the Holy Spirit. Maybe as Christians, the preacher will get up and, and the preacher doesn't have time to follow you around to figure out what you're doing, but the Holy Spirit does. <laughs> and the preacher will be given a message. Now, my messages don't come offline, okay? I won't tell you that. I, don't, I, I, was, I was talking to somebody. I said, I don't go to a website. I said, I don't even know who they are. And I think someone came up after church. It's called sermons.com. I said, I didn't even know there was anything such like that. But there is. But I don't go to it. I open up my Bible and I ask God, God, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to say? And you know, I have no problem with that. And he gives me what I need. Some things I don't want to preach. He says, preach it and I'll try to do something else. And he'll say, preach it. I, I don't want to, Lord. I'll try to do something else. Finally, I'll give up and say, okay, Lord, what do you want? And I'll write it and I'll preach the thing and I'll have people come up after church and say, preacher, that message was for me today. 
said, well, I had no idea. Can't fight against the Lord. The message is for those. You say, well, I don't need to be saved, but maybe you need to start growing in the Lord. Maybe you need to remember that when Jesus saved you of your sin and from your sin, that the Holy Spirit moved into your body. How many knew that? In Corinthians, he asked, what? Know you not that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? The dwelling place of the Holy Spirit? The Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, we are sealed unto the day of redemption. The Holy Spirit seals our life. That's okay because Jesus holds me in his hand and the Father holds me in his hand according to John chapter 10 and he, the Holy Spirit, seals me. How in the world can you ever get lost? The old preacher said one day, you might fall on the rock, but you're not going to fall off the rock. Amen. Yes, sir. So we have the convicting power of the Holy Spirit. But God doesn't like that. I mean, God likes that, but the devil doesn't like God. And he doesn't like that. The devil doesn't like that. Why he doesn't like it? Because the church is God-ordained. The church is God's established. They know the devil hates the church because he knows that when people come to church, they're going to get encouraged. Boy, I tell you what, you can go to work and get discouraged. You can go out in the public and get discouraged. You can be around people and get discouraged, but when you come to church, you ought to be able to get encouraged. Amen? Amen. I tell you what, we're, I'm very strict around here and I don't apologize for it. I believe that when we come together as a body, that we need to be an encouragement to each other. You say, well, preacher, you don't know my life. No, I don't, but God does. Well, I'm sick all the time. Well, join the club. Amen. Join the club. But you got to keep moving and keep pressing on. Amen. Some of the greatest Christians I knew, they were people that physically was, was just beat to pieces, but their spiritual person was so strong you never knew it, and they just kept going for the Lord. Man, they just kept striving and keep, but everything's going against me. I know it. That's the devil. God's got everything going for you. We put our, our life existence in his hand. Over in the book of Galatians, chapter 6, verse 2. This is a young church in Galatians, chapter 6. He says this in verse 2. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. God knows there's going to be a burden in our lives. Because the devil is still alive and well. He's still working. You say, well... No, we don't see the devil so much anymore. Oh my, look at your news. Go to where people are gathered. Talk to the little children. These little children sound like a bunch of, of uh, uh, sailors. I'm not kidding you. Back when I was a little boy, the only people used to hear curse were men, and I didn't like it. Then I get a little older, and I found out a lady can, she's not a lady. A woman can give you a cussing out just as bad as a feller can. And then you look today, this is all these kids are hearing in their home, and the kids will cuss you out. You're telling me it's good today? No, it's not good. People need to be encouraged in the Lord. People need to know that, that there's a, a people out there that still believe God is God and that He's all-powerful and God can change lives. And I want to tell you this, whether you believe it or not, God can change lives and He's wanting to change your life today. Amen. The devil wants to deceive you about prayer. 
In the Luke book of Luke chapter 5, would you join me? Luke chapter 5. He wants to deceive you about prayer, the importance of prayer. In Luke chapter 5, we see even Christ Jesus as he ministered on the earth. That in verse 16, at some points in his, his walks, he had to remove himself from everybody just to pray. And the Bible says, and he withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed. Jesus Christ knew the importance of prayer. You say, well, who did he pray to? Who we pray to? The Father. He knew the importance of prayer. He knew the importance of getting time by yourself and talking to your God. You say, well, God knows everything. Yes, he does, but he wants to hear from you. We talk to God in prayer, and God answers us through his word. That's why the Bible and prayer go hand in hand. We need to spend time in prayer. We don't need to be like the Pharisees that just repeat the same thing. And we get in a rhythm and we don't get out of the rhythm. We don't say anything new. We just keep saying the same stuff. Lord, if I have sin. Oh, no, you have sin. Amen. Oh, Lord, you know, uh, uh, and it just becomes a ritual. Our prayers don't need to be a ritual. Be like us talking to one another and we say the same thing to each other all the time. That would get a little bit old. So if, if, we, if we did this, if you came up and said the very same thing to me every time, by the time of maybe the eighth time, I'm going to say, hey, don't bother. I know what you're going to say to me. <laughs> Just keep moving on. Amen. And then when we pray, we don't even believe what we're praying. When the Lord got away and he prayed, things happened. When he prayed, when he was around the crowds, things happened. Talk about fish and the loaves. How do you feed 5,000 with just a little sack lunch that he had? Say, he's God, but he prayed. He prayed. When I was growing up in our Sunday school classes, it said, uh, uh, seven days without prayer makes one week. And it wasn't W-E-E-K. It was W-E-A-K. You spend days without prayer, you become spiritually weak. You need time every day just to go with you and your Lord. People say, I can't get away from everybody. My dad used to say, if you're a, if you're a mother, start doing dishes. Nobody will bother you. Because they know that you're going to have them dry the dishes. Fellers, do the dishes. Give your wife a heart attack. You say, well, I got a dishwasher. You got a dish fault. Get out there and do it by hand if you have to. Lock yourself in the bathroom. Get out there on a mower. I guarantee you nobody will get around there. Just talk. Say, you mean mow and pray? I want to tell you, I drive and pray. I keep my eyes open, by the way. The Bible says watch and pray, and I'm watching. I pray. I pray. I have my times of prayer. I need it. I call out to the Lord. And I, I'm to the point where I'm thinking, I'm praying that everybody get well. Maybe I need to just start praying, Lord, be with them while they're sick. Because we're all going to get sick at one time or another. Amen. Be with us while we're sick. In our sickness, Lord, let us be an inspiration to somebody else. In my sickness, Lord, let your light shine through me and let them give you the glory and the honor. One of the ladies that we dedicated the chapel to, Mrs. Alice Rankin, she was dying. She was supposed to have died some years earlier of cancer. She only had three months to live. Ten years later, she's still out visiting for the Lord. 
Now that's, that's pretty good. I don't care who you are. But there's come a time to the end of her life. And she was so sick. But she was up in Bass. And I could tell you she was up on third floor because I used to go visit her with Dad. And she'd be praying. She was, a, she was a prayer warrior. Many people said, I want her place. Give me her notes. I want to be prayer warriors. And none of them has succeeded in being a prayer warrior like her, she had. But as she laid there dying... She witnessed to a nurse that was taking care of her. That nurse saw her faith in her God. She was touched by it. And she says, Alice, I'm moving clear out of state. I'm not going to be able to take care of you anymore. Alice gave her the word of God. The Holy Spirit convicted her of her sin. She accepted Jesus Christ as her Savior. Alice died. Our pastor got a letter from the nurse. She says, you don't know this. Hours before Alice died, she brought me to Jesus. The devil hates that, folks. You that are the children of God, the devil hates you to be right with God. The devil hates you to study your Bible because that gives you power with God. The devil hates you to talk to people about the Lord because that gives other people the knowledge that they need of Jesus and, and the Holy Spirit can convict their heart and they can get saved and the devil loses so he tries to deceive everybody saying, you know, you're okay. Everything's fine. You know that old preacher, he goes off a lot. Just pat him on the back and tell him you love him and praying for him and he'll be okay. That's not the deal. The question is, are you okay? Are you okay with the Lord? Are you saved? Christians, are you where you're supposed to be? Not where you're comfortable about being, but are you where you're supposed to be with the Lord in your walk? Is there anything lacking? The devil says, oh, you're doing enough. Bless your heart. You're doing a lot more than others. That doesn't make any difference. We're not comparing ourselves to others. We're comparing ourselves to our walk with God. Amen? Amen? Anybody getting anything this morning? Amen. Okay. But he hates prayer. You know why? Because prayer brings power. 2 Chronicles chapter 7. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, the Bible talks about the, the power you get for, from prayer and what it does. Now, everybody knows this because we've gone through the COVID and everybody has seen this and, and they've heard this scripture. But I'm telling you what, the devil will say, well, there you go again. But no, you listen. The power of prayer. In verse 14 of 2 Chronicles chapter 7, if my people which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Man, there's a process that we see here. We see a people who are called by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. They need to humble themselves. They need to pray. They need to seek his face. They need to turn from their old wicked lives and, and be the children of God. He says, then I will hear from heaven and then the land will be healed. Our old land needs to be healed. You say, how come it's not being healed? You know why I think it's not being healed? It's not the lost people because the lost people always be lost like that. But it's, it goes back to my people. Still, the Christians, after all this stuff we've gone through, still the Christians as a whole, they just want to do enough to get by. they got too much pride. Well, I'm not going to go talk to these people. Well, these people need Jesus. Well, i got family members, but every time I talk to them about the Lord, they just get mad. Well, if they get mad enough, maybe they'll get saved and they'll get glad. Well, uh, my friends, they don't like 
like it. You know why they don't like it? They don't know it. How in the world can you not like the thought of going to heaven and knowing that you're going to heaven? you got to be out of your ever-loving mind not to. Especially when it's free. How many likes free? I do. But when Jesus gave me salvation free, there ain't nobody that's going to beat that. Nobody. Not only does it take care of me in this life, it takes care of me in the life to follow. Nobody. You, I, every now and then on cue, if you got, if you got a little birthday, They'll send you a little text saying, congratulations, it's your birthday. We've got a free drink for you. And you go in there and say, it's my birthday. Well, go get you a a, a Pepsi. I'll go in there and I'll feel that thankful, that crushed. I I love crushed eyes. I like that better than I do the pop. And I'll fill that stuff up. And I'll say, thank you, see you next year. And then those rascals gave me a, 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 a card. I'm a card carrying on cue. Man, you buy this, you get this for free. Oh, that is great, but I don't like this. And I don't like what you're giving me for free. <laughs> it's always that energy drink. Folks, I don't need energy drinks. Would you agree? That would be dangerous. Give me energy drinks. Can you imagine me young and having energy drinks? If I got this much energy at 65, oh, I'd be horrible. I'd be running around the walls. That's right. But Jesus gives it to us free. The devil, he doesn't like you to know that. He doesn't like you to know that you find peace in prayer. You find answers in prayer. He, you find consecration in prayer. Because in prayer, if you do it right, you say, Lord, look at me. Here I am. Clean me up and let me be clean. That's the important part. We used to have an old dog. I've had several old dogs. My wife has one old dog still. And that's me. <laughs> but uh, we've had old dogs. Now, there were some dogs that didn't mind getting cleaned up. They love that water. They love that soap. There's other ones that did not like it. Bolivar Sockwad was one of them who did not like it. And boy, to give him a bath, it was a fight. And sometimes when God tries to clean us up, Christians, we fight him. Why? We ought to want to be clean for the Lord Jesus Christ. We ought to say, Lord, here am I. Clean me up. Make me the way you want me to be. As that old song goes, mold me and make me after your will, God, not mine. After your will. But Satan doesn't like that. He'll try to deceive you and tell you you don't need to be consecrated. But in 1 John Chapter 5, verse 22, it says we do. 1 John chapter 3, verse 24, it says we do. He hates prayer because it brings victory. This is my last talk today, this morning. It brings victory. Nobody likes to lose, yet people leave this life with the worst loss there ever was, the loss of their eternal existence. Prayer. Prayer brings us to Christ Jesus. Our faith knowing that if we ask Him to forgive us our sin, come into our heart and save us, He will do just what we ask in that area. Prayer's vital in our new birth in Jesus Christ. You say, well, what about people who can't speak? Hey, they can pray in their hearts and in their minds. Prayer gives us victory. 
We ask you to pray about things and we tell you the victories that are won because of prayer. Prayer was given for our nation and we had us a good nation and we're going to be great again. I know it. It might be when Jesus returns, but we are going to be good again. Amen. You say, well, there's nothing wrong with it now. Then why aren't people being saved? Why aren't people living for Jesus? But prayer brings victory. The Bible tells us when we meet together that God's there. And everybody misapplies that scripture. Well, preacher, I wasn't at church, but you know when when two or more are gathered together, he's there. So we went out to the lake and and we got on our in our fishing boat and we threw out the lures and we just praised God because he's there. He's not talking about attendance. He's talking about prayer in that scripture. Amen. Hebrews says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. As you see that day approaching, what day? The day. The Lord's going to come and receive into himself his children. If it would happen in the next three seconds, I wonder how many people would be left behind because they didn't know Jesus as their Savior. Can you imagine the reaction? Woo! The preacher was right. No, the preacher's not right. The Word of God's right. Well, I'll pray real quick. Oh, Lord, forgive me my sake. I'm in my heart. I'm still here. Well, let me go back to that movie of Left Behind and see how they got... No, 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 no. That movie didn't come out of the Word of God. You go back to the Word of God as it was in the days of Noah. The Bible says, and God shut the door and nobody entered in. Oh, everybody that was getting flooded and drowned, they were ready to go into the ark. But the ark door was open... They refused it. But now the door shut. Everybody wants to go. It's too late. Folks, the door of heaven is still open today. Walk in while you can. You say, well, I don't believe in this end thing. Well, neither did the people of the world when Noah went into the ark. And it had never rained before in in the history of the world. And they sat there for a little bit and they said, Yeah, look, they're in there. Yeah, they're in there and you're out here. They went past the flood. Amen. These people were drowned by the flood. The devil wants to deceive you, folks. He's not doing it any new way. There's not a new way. It's just the old ways repackaged. My friend, I don't care who you are. I want you to know that God loves you. His only son died on the cross for you. He paid that awful penalty and he just says, come unto me. Go to the Lord. You say, I don't know how. In just a second, we're going to have an invitation service. We're going to invite you to the altars. Someone will open up the Word of God. And they will show you what the Bible says about going to heaven. Not what the Baptists or the Presbyterians or the Catholics or the Nazarenes or the Episcopals or the dot. Whatever it is. I've never seen churches, so many of them, called dot. Dot something. Dot something. My friends, it's God's way. Or you will not enter in. Well, can I I change it a little bit? No. God's got it said in His Bible. It's the way to heaven. Let's all stand with our head bowed and our eyes closed. No one looking around. God hates... God God hates it when when people deny Him. 
You say, he doesn't care. He does care. He gave the very best for you. The devil hates it when you accept Christ. I'd rather the devil being mad than God being angry at me. Amen. People are already starting to come to the altars. Maybe you need to step out with all of our heads bowed and eyes closed. What are you going to do with God? What are you going to do with the invitation? Knowing that you need to be saved. Knowing that you need to give your life wholly to God. Christian, quit making excuses. Start living for Him. Father in heaven, now work in this hour. Let He, the Holy Spirit, convict our hearts. Let He, the Holy Spirit, woo us to you. Fight the devil. Fight the devil for us, Lord. Let people understand that today is the day of salvation. We'll trust that, Lord, we'll see victory. In Jesus' name, amen. Page 380.